So I'm Kyle, uh, Kyle Gatsby. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, shame to try to approach the dumbest first. <laughs> this is an uh, intro to Gatsby. <laughs> but yeah, you know, thanks. Uh, anyway, so, um, so Gatsby, a blazing fast static site generator for React. Um, it's gotten pretty popular, so it has 22,000 GitHub stars and roughly 400,000 NPM downloads per month. Um, notable sites use it like reactjs.org, which is probably new to. Uh, so a bit about my tech background. Uh, so I started programming for the web uh, with Drupal back in 2006, and I was like pretty hardcore Drupaler <laughs> for some years. Um, with all the sites, I actually tried doing a startup on uh, um, Drupal, uh, spoke at several Drupal cons. It's good times. Uh, then I, I kind of uh, felt the, the move of you know, the JavaScript, uh, you know, web app world. And so when, when Backbone came out in the 2000, late 2010, I kind of like jumped on that because I was like, oh, okay. I now finally get how to actually just build a straight up JavaScript web app. So I was using like Backbone and Brunch, and jQuery, and common JS modules for that. Anyways, it was good times. Um, oh, and then, uh, yeah, in 2014, I started using React and presumably, I'll use it for a while. Uh, so, um, yeah, so uh, React came out in 2013 and then uh, sort of got on my radar end of 2013 and then 2014, early 2014, I quit the job I was working at and uh, just started playing around with new tech and like React is one of the things that I, I dived into and it was just really astounding how good it was that you know, I've been doing Backbone and like Backbone was great, I, I, I made things, I shipped code. I ship features, ship products, whatever, and it was good. But I started using React, and things that took me weeks to do were literally taking like even hours or days to re-implement React. And where Backbone and jQuery was just kind of like fiddly, you know, or just like, like if I work really hard, I'll kind of keep everything together. But you know, if you turn your head or something, the whole thing's just gonna blow apart. And where React, it just like everything felt solid all the time. It was kind of the whole pit of success that Facebook talks about. That you just use it how it sort of seems natural to use it, and you'll just fall into good patterns. And React's design um, does a really excellent job of that. And I was just like, this is amazing. And uh, I don't know, it's kind of funny, like, you start using new technology, and you just sort of get this vibe of, like, this is the future. Um, that's happened a few times, and uh, React was definitely uh, one of those. And so, yeah, so I don't want to use anything else. Um, yeah, so Gatsby came out in like 2015. And it was simply because I was so in love with React, I was like, I don't want to use anything. I mean, I needed to build a website. It was like, I don't want to use any other tool, any other stack type generator, any CMS, whatever. All those sort of things just felt funky compared to writing React models. <coughs> and so I built Gatsby. Um, and the point of Gatsby is to basically, you know, React is like run some JavaScript and runs a web, but it can also server render. So you can like, statically render out HTML uh, and then load it back into the client. So anyway, so Gatsby just kind of automates that process. So it server renders React to static HTML, so site flows blazingly fast. Um, but then, once you're in the site, it's not static anymore because it loads the JavaScript uh, for your that React page into the browser. So you have like a full-blown React app. So it's kind of like the easiest way to kind of get a React app up and running. Um, yeah, so what's cool about that is that it's like React is just like a great way to, great template language basically to kind of like build out pages. You know, components, you can take like a complex UI and decompose the components in a very kind of natural build that way. But what's super cool is that with Gatsby, it's like anytime you need to add interactive or dynamic pieces, you, you're in React land, so you just kind of add it in all these colors. <coughs> so, Universal JavaScript. Uh, yeah, if any of you were doing like tons of JavaScript before in React, like everyone was like, what have you seen amazing? If it just like turn around again. But nobody ever, I mean, there's a lot of really, really, really hacky ways of doing it. And it was like hilarious. Like these like engineers would just like go to extraordinary lengths to make stuff work. And I was always like, man, that is, that is an enormous pile of crap you got there. But good, good on you. And, you know, so I never really needed it, so I didn't really worry about it as much. But React is awesome because it just makes it pretty straightforward. So yeah, so May 21st, 2015, which was 
Monday was the three year happy birthday uh, of Gatsby. Uh, get up there in years. Um, so the initial release of, of, of Gatsby was very much just like kind of traditional static type generator, where uh, Hexo, Jekyll, or Hugo, or whatever, where you like have markdown files and you run Gatsby build and it spits out a set. Uh, except of course the noble, you know, that using React and it creates a client setup with the, uh, you know, the client navigation. So I built the initial version of Gatsby, rebuilt my blog on the company website, that was working at the time, and things are great. But tons of people started using Gatsby, and if any of you have ever run an open source project before, it's like, hey, sweet project, bro, but uh, could be on this. Anyways. <laughs> And then you're like, well, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. You should have that too. And then before you know it, you don't have a life. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, a lot of them were around like integrated with data sources. They're like, okay, this is cool, but I don't you know, I can't just, I, I need to build a site that the data won't come from Markdown or JSON or whatever. Like it needs to come from WordPress or Contentful or Drupal, um, et cetera. And also people are like, hey, I don't have just like a little small little site, like, you know, kind of what I was thinking for my needs when I built it. They're like, we have like really big sites and we want to do code splitting and data splitting, uh, kind of lazy load things as you go around the site. And I was like, whoa, that's a cool idea. Uh, so what I realized is that people were wanting to use Gatsby as the presentation layer for their CMS. So I mean, CMS content management system kind of a broad sense that's not just the, the little to amp in a second. So not just the stack site generated React and Markdown. Which got me really excited because I was like, what? Oh, well. Don't make too much noise. So it's got me excited because I was like, you know, my, my, my Drupal days, I was like, sweet, like Drupal, like building, building the type of sites that Drupal is for is like really fun, except for uh, the Drupal part. <laughs> <laughs> well, Drupal has its, Drupal has many things. Uh, it's just, it's just not as fun as it could be, especially. Drupal, all the CMS, what's funny about CMS is that they are all designed like 15, 20 years ago. And so a lot of kind of assumptions that we make about how we do software engineering has changed significantly since then. You know, stuff about like databases and that, you know, like storing config in databases is just horrible. Um, anyways, yeah, so like now these days we're like, hey, everything's self contained and like it's in a Git repo and you can recreate your site anytime from that. You have like a Package.json or whatever the other language is used. And uh, anyways, um, yeah, so I was like, <clears throat> hey, Gatsby can solve similar kind of like complex CMS type problems uh, if you know if it could integrate with WordPress and Tensor Drupal, because you need some sort of like content management system, content infrastructure, if you will, uh, <laughs> to, uh, to to do that sort of thing. Um, and that's anyways, and then Gatsby's presentation. There. So traditional CMS is you have content backend. And you have presentation layer, and they're kind of glued together. So, like with Drupal, you know, you have you can create like content types, and then you can like you know sign permissions. You can edit and you know, create those or edit them, and then people add things. You create views and whatever. And then you have like their their own twig these days. But anyways, you have like the PHP templates with then you know, output the HTML um, from the content, and it's all kind of like glued together. Uh, so a lot of people have been experimenting with, uh, and people, what kind of people are getting at, and you know, the issue of our feature request is like using like uh, kind of a decoupled CMS where you have, you know, CMS that's now headless. It doesn't have a way to actually build the site. And then you have a presentation layer. And then this should be kind of like a squiggly line because it's kind of a write your own blue code basically to connect the two together. And so yeah, so people were like, how do you do this with Gatsby? Um, how do you connect Gatsby to your head of CMS? And how do you bridge content? You know, uh, so anyway, so I thought about this and the solution I came up with is source plugins and GraphQL. Uh, where you have this CMS, you have presentation layer which is Gatsby, and then you have build time GraphQL to kind of like pull data from somewhere and then put it into your React components and then spit out HTML files. Uh, so like Michael was talking about, you know, source plugins are kind of like how you integrate Gatsby with any API and make that data accessible to your components. So started working on that in late 2016 
And then 2017, July, uh, released V1 of Gatsby with support for this. And so now all you have to do to, you know, use contentful as a data source for Gatsby is install the plugin from NPM and then start writing your output queries and then put your data into React. And that's really easy. Uh, get going in minutes. Um, yeah, you can do fun stuff like, you know, you can make your mark down locally with my queries for it. So, anyways, so if you haven't seen what a Gatsby page looks like, you have up here just a normal React component, but then down here you write a query and the data is then accessible, sort of magically, uh, in the, the component. Uh, yeah, so there's dozens of source plugins now for all sorts of content. Uh, it's actually up to 302 now. Um, yeah, so uh, so yeah, so the one is kind of crazy. Uh, it's sort of like heads down, sitting in my apartment, working on stuff, and then launch V1, and all of a sudden, just like usage and issues and PRs just went kabooey. So this is a uh, V1 right here, um, and then yeah, the curve just kind of accelerated a lot. Uh, now we're up to 800 total contributors to the project, uh, dozens of PRs per week. Really fun to focus. Um, it's a bit of a replay from Shannon, but can't talk about which fun to read tweets. Yeah, it's cool too. It's like Lighthouse is like a really, uh, really neat initiative from Google Chrome's uh, team to just kind of add a really rich way of measuring your site's performance. And we, we've done a lot of work just to make sure that Gatsby scores really well of bots uh, for Lighthouse. So yeah, some sites are built with Gatsby, uh, governor, someone running for governor in the States, uh, designsystems.com, uh, which we have recently launched, kind of an explainer about the census and really cool site. And content, I read the right say. Uh, this next generation database, this is an e commerce site um, that built on Gatsby and like Gatsby and Shopify. And it's really nifty if you just click around the site like super fast um, and it feels very interactive. And it's like really well executed. Code sandbox.io, emoji tinder, tinder. So, how to get started with Gatsby? Uh, pretty straightforward. You go to, well, if you go to gatsbyjs.org, this is, there's a big, Get started button so you can find this. But uh, there's a CLI and then um, there's starters. There's like a default starters. So you just do Gatsby and the name of site and then it'll install everything and run Gatsby develop and then you're running Gatsby. Uh, we also have a tutorial which Shannon talked about, um, which I highly recommend it. And yeah, so V2 beta. Uh, I was a about that earlier. Um, just run through a few features. Uh, it's actually not a lot of new features. Well, there is kind of, there's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit, it's mostly keeping up with upstreams, to be honest. So, but the upstreams have some nice new features. So, Webpack 1 to 4, like Webpack 4 is much faster and stable um, and produces slightly smaller bundles than Webpack 1 does. So, it's a very solid, impressive update. Webpack can doing really well. Uh, React 15 to 16, also smaller, uh, has some new cool features like, you know, error boundaries and fragments in the uh, new context API. Um, Babel 6 to Babel 7 is actually really, like they've been some really impressive stuff. Uh, one of the things that I really like is like they have automatic polyfilling them. So if you're used to importing like the Babel polyfill or something like that, you actually don't have to do anything anymore to get polyfilling uh, because they now automatically look for usages of APIs, like JavaScript APIs that are not supported by um, which are not supported by your target browsers. So if you see like browser list, you can like specify which browsers you're, you're, you're supporting with your site. And then if you use one that's not supported by some of those, in that module, they'll automatically add an import to the polyfill. Uh, so which is cool because, well, it's automatic, which is always nice because it's, it sucks to be like, oh, I'm building a feature, building a feature, and you ship it, and then somebody's like, I love it, bro. Anyway, whatever. So that won't happen anymore. Uh, but it's also cool because it isolates your imports or your polyfills to the sections of the site that actually are using them. So instead of putting the polyfills, like a big loop of polyfills on your critical path, you know, so every page that somebody loads, you know, they're like, hey, let's run through, you know, 75 fill files of JavaScript. It's isolated to that, like, you know, 
big fat feature uh, in some part of your site that has all this like complicated code that you know is hard to support with browsers. So anyways, there's a lot of really nice benefits from that. Uh, another really cool thing, we've been doing some uh, interesting uh, optimizations. So we have a, we've been collaborating with uh, Google and uh, some other people open source where there's a, a Gatsby plugin which integrates with guest.js, which is like a machine learning uh, package that kind of takes your Google Analytics data and then figures out, you know, if the user is on page X, which, you know, pages are they most likely to visit from there. And then Gats the Gatsby plugin uses that information to then automatically start prefetching, you know, the pages that the user is most likely to visit. And so it's going to like dramatically speed up your site because, you know, they load this page and they're like, you know, 80% of visitors then click on this next thing. And because, you know, we know that using the analytics and machine learning, you know, that data, the, the data, the resources necessary for the page are already, you know, in the, in the, in the browser cache by the time the user clicks on something. Um, so things like this can like really improve the perceived speed of your site. Uh, we also added uh, what we call ludicrous mode. So you can see, uh, this is Mike actually working this feature. So he's typing here and it's like, you know, hot reloading the data changes immediately um, when you're developing. So yeah, one of the big, one of the kind of core values of Gatsby is that you know development is fun, development is like productive when you have kind of this immediate connection between like what you're modifying and how it like then modifies your actual running program. So we, we spend a lot of time kind of thinking and finding ways to make that gap between I change something and then I see how it you know affects my running application as fast as possible. We have a ton more to do, but you know it's fun when we can find uh, you know ways to dramatically improve that. Oh, that was okay. So, uh, okay. Yeah. So, oh yeah, and also V two static query is another big thing uh, that that Jason uh, modeled. So we had like V one, we have like the special layout component, and it proved confusing and useless. <laughs> um, it's really much. The worst API, not as opposed to it, it had some, it had some positive points, but uh, on the whole, it definitely needed to go. And so V2 removed that and replaced it with the ability to add queries directly in your compiles. Um, yeah, so try Gatsby and uh, contribute, and then 